Hello, beautiful people. You're in the Beat Sessions. I am your host, Mitchell Weary. We're looking at the brand new record from Dumpster Funk entitled Where Do We Go From Here? They released that on April 23rd. This is the fourth studio album from the band. It is their first since 2013's Dirty Word, which is a damn good record. It's got some cool guest appearances from Ani DeFranco, Flea from the Red Hot Chili Peppers, amongst others. But it has also been eight years, so it's nice to see these guys return with some new material, especially with the return of live music. I'm excited to know that there's some new songs for these guys to jam out to. And if you're not familiar with Dumpsta Funk, they have built the bulk of their reputation off of their live show. This is one of those bands, they remind me of Snarky Puppy or the original Dave Matthews Band lineup as far as every musician in the group is so talented on their respective instrument. And it just brings such an incredible dynamic to the live show. So if you have a chance to do that, you should definitely check them out. This band came together on a whim uh, almost 20 years ago, back in 2003. Lead singer Ivan Neville just had a slot that he needed to fill for a festival, brought this group of cats together, and with a little simple twist of fate, here we are 20 years later. And they seriously have built a reputation as being arguably the best band in New Orleans. Neville's voice is absolutely on point, one of the big things about their music, and it's on display in its, you know, in its best form in this record. Um, loving the big vocal hooks on all these songs really reminds me a lot of Sly Stone in, in a, lot of, a lot of respects on this record. Big, uh, just a, a great lyrical performance too as well. Um, you know, funk has been a music or a, a genre that I think is all, I don't want to call it political, but social and uh, cultural awareness. Um, you know, the just the discussion of what is going on. Marvin Gaye said it. What's going on? Is, uh, you know, something that's been at the forefront of this genre. And so I really am loving the way that Neville is handling lyrical content on this record. Uh, Make It After All is a really good example. It's the second track on the record that um, I just, I, like, I love the energy of the song and I love the, the lyric in particular. So if I make the wrong decisions as I go, it's my fault and I'm to blame. I'm going to make it after all. And it's just a, a really cool sentiment that, you know, is carried throughout this record as far as personal accountability and that if we want to start fixing the problems of the world, let's focus on ourselves, how we can become better people. And in the process of doing that, we can set an example for others and make the better, you know, make the world a better place by, by you know, constructing a better self. And that's, you know, a, a cool part of this record. I'm a big believer in that philosophy. And uh, I'm just loving, loving what's going on there as far as the, the lyrical content from Neville. These guys have two bass players in Tony Hall and Nick Daniels. So you just get a, a really big full sound because of that, uh, that dual bass attack. And it's a lot of fun. I've never seen these guys live, but it's certainly cool to check out video footage of them and what they're able to do with that dynamic. Ian Neville, Ivan's cousin, is their guitar player. And I'm, I'm loving what he brings to the table as far as the rock element on this record. This is definitely a funk record, but it reminds me, this, their style really reminds me of getting the best of both worlds from George Clinton. This album, especially the songs on it, have the rock, um, the rock feel of Funkadelic albums, but the commercial pop accessibility of Parliament, if that makes sense. So I, you know, like I hear a lot of George Clinton and I'm hearing the amalgamation of, of both of these elements. And the album opener, United Nations Stomp, probably my favorite track. I mean, it, it's tough to tell. You know, it is, it is a heavy rock and roll track, but it is also equal parts heavy funk. And I'm absolutely loving that song. It might be one of my favorite tracks so far this year. Fantastic tune. Really like the incorporation of a couple of instrumental tracks. Kind of, you know, changes up the, the tone of this album a little bit. And especially because it's a little on the long side. It's 11 songs coming in at 61 minutes. But, um, you know, I, I will say I, I was, you know, going through the, the track list and uh, my one criticism, there's a few songs. The song Do You, it, it's not a bad song, I would say, of all the songs on this record, though. It's the one that sounds the most like them, just going through the motions. And then the 10th song, Sounds, is a banger. I mean, that is just a heavy rock and roll track. It's awesome. It does feel slightly out of place on this record, even with the heavy rock influence from Ian Neville and their style. But you do the math, you take those two songs away, we still got a runtime that's like somewhere in like the early 50 minutes. And the reason I preach the 44 minute runtime is 
that's what an album holds. And you run any longer than that, then you have to do double LPs, and double LPs get expensive. Yes, the financial factor is very much a part of my reviews and why I give approval to records. But seeing as how those two songs wouldn't really affect the double LP situation and seeing as how I love this record so much and what is going on, I mean, it's, it's so well produced. Just uh, I, the, the, that was one of the things I noticed as well is the production quality is phenomenal. The, the balance of the instrumentation is great. And then when, you know, the, when a song does want to focus on an instrument, it's, you know, it's, it's at the forefront of the track, but not in a way that drowns out the rest of the music. I mean, just everything about this album is really well done. And they're putting it on this dirty gold vinyl. Look at that. Give me that double LP. I will take it. I'm giving this album a big time vinyl, please. And I hope you enjoy listening to this album as well. I just thought it was a ton of fun and really just, uh, you know, you don't, you don't get a lot of good funk albums these days. And so when they come along and when they're this damn good, you got to cherish them. I hope you find this review helpful. Please like this video, subscribe to my channel and check out the live show on Sunday nights. And we will see you next time on the Beat Sessions.